Hello all, welcome in. Hello, hello. So today's video is on basing. Ooh. And um, so the models I've picked out are a, a mixture range. So we've got some old Citadel metal models. We've got some big Citadel metal models. We've got some resin models from Reaper. We've got some plastic models from Citadel as well. And what the, the method we're doing, you can do with any models. This is where it gets really tough. So if, you're, if they're plastic, resin or whatever, it doesn't matter. Here is me just cleaning off a bit of a mold line. Uh, so we use the mold line removal tool from Citadel for that, which is really good. I also use um, a, s a scalpel sometimes, or I use a Stanley knife. So there's the, there's the dreaded skin catcher going in right now. Oh no, be careful. It's uh, it's so, so if you've got to get, and there's the Stanley knife, yes. Yeah. So if you've got to get like really into a corner where you can't fit the mold line remover tool, then these are these are quite necessary so it's good to do what we do is we we fully assemble and then we then then we base yes so we we make sure the whole model is is ready first and then once we've removed all the mold lines and imperfections we've filled all the gaps and such then we'll um we'll get clippers and sort of clip the base the um the the, the bit of metal or resin between the feet will clip that uh, outside of the feet. So basically when the model gets stuck into what will be the air dry clay, you won't have any um, plastic showing around the feet. Mm. So this is how we, we sort of make it look like the model is standing on part of that uh, thing. So it, it will be sort of like an anchor. It's an anchor. So, so some people do something called pinning and will pin maybe some of the models that are metal that don't have a tag underneath them. But if I can keep the tag on like this one here. Now a lot oh, of people hate to see tag. Yeah, oh, people no. hate seeing me do this, but the tag is a perfect pin because it's a little bit wider than a paper clip. But it's, it's quite a lot wider. It's thicker, it holds the model better, and when the air dry clay dries around it, it will um, there'll be a tiny bit of shrinkage and it will actually hold the model really firm. So. And that that's especially very good for metal model yeah. models, isn't it? Because yeah. they they tend to be heavier, so those those tag help them to to stay stay in the clay for 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 long it's, time. It's you know it's quite the tags are quite thick, so for me to drill and then get a rod that thick and put it through the feet is quite risky business. But just leaving that little bit of tag on is completely part of the model and it hold it really strong. So that's what we do. So cleaning, cleaning up metal models is not, they is have, not too bad. It's not too bad. The, uh, and the models sometimes come fully assembled. So you only have to take a little bit of a line off here or there, or there'll be little tags on them that you take off here or there. But most of all, uh, a, lot of the, a lot of models are just ready to go. The, you'll notice if there is a line that runs through it, it'll tend to run uh, all the way through it symmetrically. So the, the line on this guy, for example, ran all the way up the middle of him. So that line could be followed across the middle of him and I just had to go around and remove it. So what you've got there on the table is you've got a little pot of PVA glue in the top right. You've got some air dry clay in the bottom left. That's my hand drilling tool for, for pinning. And uh, we've got a little box of uh, sand that I got from Serious Play and um, Rival, Rival Crafts. Craft. Uh, and I, I do a little mixed sand box bag. Uh, I also use a power tool, power drill sometimes, but um, it, on metal models, sometimes it helps to use a hand drill. So I'm there and I, before I put the drill through, I'm checking where the drill's gonna go. So you wanna know, is it gonna, is it gonna go through, is there gonna be space for the drill? You don't want it to pop out either side of the leg. So you gotta think about the angles that you're drilling from. So I might drill at a different angle just to get a, a hole started and then I'll turn the drill in the direction that I want it to progress up through the leg. Um, I use a one millimeter drill and the reason I do that is because that is accessible for most models and then I can get a regular paper clip bend it and stick it in there as well. So it all works nicely. It's all very, very easy. 
But you don't you don't usually have to do this, dear, because no, you you do all the hard job. Yeah, the, well, hard I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it's hard. It's just different, isn't it? It's just work, but uh, it's it, it's quite therapeutic. I yeah. mean, I mean, the, for the, me, the the drilling? for me, it, it is a little bit messy, and I do like messy, you messy do, yes. jobs. Yeah. The only thing is that you you do it so efficiently. Yeah. Uh, you know, when when you do basic. Oh yeah. So 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 here, sorry, I'm, um, I've I've I put my finger against the drill and pulled it out to wheel, to work out just how deep we've gone in. So that allows me to know whether or not I need to go deeper. Because obviously, the more you drill in, and the more paper clip you have in there when you super glue it, the the better your anchor will be. So you see me holding the finger there against the model, and then pulling it out to get a rough idea again of where how deep we are in. Um, so that lets me know how far we've gone in. That's a little a little thing you can do. So I know what you so you you yeah. This is normally something that you'd enjoy, but I've got it down to a T really, haven't I? Yeah. So it just makes sense that I do all the wait when you do basing all, basing. all day. You just you just go through so many different models that you know, and, and and it's done so quickly that I just feel like I I don't need to do it anymore. Yeah. I mean and we we do basing to tabletop standard. Um, we we do some fancy bases, but I think it's nice if you got time to have a real think about the base you want to make and make it really pretty. So we, we try and get a middle ground of making them pretty and um, also uh, functional because we want to play games with all these guys essentially. So Yeah, but there's nothing to stop you, you know, if, if you put, uh, if you put, uh, make a clay basis, there's nothing to stop you to add more to it, like, you know, skulls or... Skulls, flowers. Uh, flowers. Yeah. Um, grass flocks and you know the, this sort of stuff so. so so those are all the things that you can you can add extra to when the clay is especially if the clay is still malleable it's quite easy then to get some pva glue put it on the base and and squish a skull in so it looks like the skull has been squished into the ground rather than um just placing him on afterwards yeah. uh, it's likewise in the back there you can't quite see them but next to the pva are some little mushrooms little metal mushrooms and those I'll stick in the bases as well. There's the paper clips I use just to show you guys. It is normal, normal paper clips that you can buy bags of hundreds of them. And these are what I use to pin all the models. So we just straighten it out. There we go. And then we cut off a straight bit. We, we, you can sort of pre-test them. So you put them in without putting any glue on them, or you can put the glue on them and then put them in and then cut them off at the right length. Either way works absolutely fine. We're using Element Games Super Thick. Element Games Thick Glue is, is absolutely fantastic. So you glue it, pop it in, and you know, it feels firm in there, and then you can just cut off a little excess. Now, the depth of the pin is going to affect the depth of your base so you want it you want it deep enough so that the model is going to be firmly held in place and you also don't want it too deep because you don't want to have to make a massive mound of clay for you to be able to stick your model on the base so like three millimeters is good i think like two to three millimeters should be enough it's just it's just a little bit of extra support that stops your model falling forward after he's been glued on the base yeah um and it, it really does anchor them in. When you put, once that PVA glue is set inside the clay, I mean, this is the stuff that holds up shelves, wooden shelves. It is, it is really, really good at supporting models. So I use, I, I let the PVA glue dry. So I leave, I leave the lid open for like a day or two after I put fresh PVA glue in there. So it goes quite thick and creamy. Um, you know, and, and likewise, if I've just got a bag of air dry clay and it's a fresh bag, you sort of want to let it aerate a little bit because um, you don't want it too runny as a clay. You know, you want it you want it nice and firm, but not not setting rock solid straight away. So you get used to it. You get once you get a new bag of clay, you give it a bit of time. Um, I dry test it first, so what you saw just was me putting what I thought was the right amount of clay on with no glue involved, just to test if it was going to be the right amount. 
and then I put a lot of PVA glue on, stick the clay on, and if I'm doing a sandy base, I'll put PVA glue straight on top. I'll pop the model on, and then I'll run it through the sand, like so. So, I mean, that looks quite natural now, just as that. I'll make sure that none of it's sticking up too much, bearing in mind the glue is gonna shrink, so you want to make sure there's lots of sand packed in there. You want to make sure the model's feet aren't deep in the clay. You know, it you want it to look like he stood on the ground, not he's so heavy he's ended up inside the ground. So there's a few things to look out for. As you see there, I'm ripping off a bit more clay this time, dry testing it, dry fitting it, uh, making sure that it sort of goes up to the edges everywhere. It's the same sort of two to three millimeter thickness that I'm looking for. Um, that it's not too rounded maybe, maybe I'll add a bit more clay to it if I want to make a little bit of a, a rock that he's standing on for a statuesque figure. Again, lots of really goopy thick PVA glue getting put on there. So the PVA glue is not very runny, it's no, quite, it's quite it is, thick. It is very thick. And it's important to remember that uh, you, if, you shouldn't really uh, skimp on the glue Yeah, there. don't skimp on the glue. If you don't put enough on, It'll, it'll dry uh, uh, really thin and it won't, it won't hold anything down. So it'll, it won't hold the clay or, or the model. Now this one I'm doing with a roller. So I've, I've put the, the clay on, I've put the glue just on the bottom, I've run it through the sand around the sides, careful not to get any sand on the top of the clay, and then I've ran the roller over the top. So this is a rather inexpensive way of doing loads of bases with textures and then I've re-gone round the sides picking up extra sand with the glue that's splurged out put PVA on the tags and then I can stick the model into the base and that will be absolutely solid that will be absolutely brilliant when that's dry and you, you can tell if the clay is solid as well that it will feel nice it will feel like it's already attached and, and drying now the, the glue will shrink around his feet, but if, if you feel like you put a bit too much glue on, you can get an old brush and just spread it out a little bit, just so that you have an, and you don't end up with a lump of glue around his feet. Uh, if anyone wonders how these look when they're fin finished and painted, they can view either my Instagram or Evelina's Instagram. Uh, so mine is Jimmy the Brush and Evelina's is Princess Avalana. I'll put links in the, in the description. But as you'll see, the finished versions, they are very nice. They look very impressive, yeah. usually. And they look like little cookies. So this is a Reaper miniature, and Reaper do really nice square bases with a little lip around the top of them. And it sort of really helps. It's like a, it's like a frame for a photo. It helps it stand out what you've got on top. So I've checked the amount of clay I'm putting on again, making sure I fill that with glue and then I'll start to pop the model on. And with this one here, I'll sort of want it to look like it's all part of a, a big rocky outcropping that the skeleton is crawling over, so I'll put glue over the clay probably and over the, the resin and make it all fit in. You know, I'll try and bring the whole thing together as if it was all one, all one job. So I'm squeezing quite a large base into the base here. So the problem with that is it moves, it creates a crater with the clay. So you really want to fill it around the sides with extra PVA glue and then run it through the sand. And as you can see there, it's, it's, it's nicely done. And it, it all, it's all nicely merged together. So, the, so the, the base of the model that was integrated with, it doesn't really stand out so much. So yeah. when it's going to be primed and painted, it's going to look really nice. Yeah, it'll, all, it'll look like it, like it was intentional, like one solid piece of plastic. And now I think I'm doing the big boys, working on the ogres. Ooh. Again, thinking with these guys, they're pretty heavy. I'm going to make sure they've got a nice base to stand on. Like a cookie. Like a cookie. Yeah, maybe this one will be three to four millimeters, maybe, high. Um, Just thinking about the clay, because the clay, when you said you, you let it uh, dry a little bit, you let, you let so it air some, a little bit. Some brands of clay will dry within half an hour and they'll be rock solid. So if you get like the DAS brands, the air dried DAS brands, they'll be, they, you won't need to leave them to dry. They'll, they'll dry very quick. 
but I buy the big, the big 10 kilogram bags. They arrive quite smushy. Yes, so there, there you can, you will notice there will be a little bit like. A, oh, by the way, uh, so so here I've the, the the glue was on the feet, the sand is on the feet when it's come out of there. So I'll get another waste brush, you know, an old brush that I've kept, and I'll just brush all the sand off the feet just to make sure that it's all good. But as you can see there, guys, the the clay holds a big metal model like that really well, and the end result is really nice as well. Yeah. Um, I might even throw in some pictures on this video at the end just to show you guys some of our finished models. I think that'd be good. Here, so here's some of the skulls you can get. Um, Citadel do a box of 100 skulls and you can also get ferns and other things. They're quite difficult to get the mold line off. So I think I might have lost a skull or two here trying to get the mold line off for this I video. usually find them on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so... So, so I, make sure you check your carpets yeah, before vacuuming. I do a few of them at a time, and if one falls, I just leave it to the, <laughs> to the floor gods. Um, so then we go back to the base. Sometimes I stick a bit of PVA down first on the spot that I want it to go on. Other times you can just smush it in if there's already a lot of PVA there. But I think it's best just to give it its own little bit of PVA that it will stick to. And you smush it in and then it will look like it's been there forever it looks like it's part of the scenery you know timeless um, yes that's what we like we want this it to look like like this ogre just walked over to us and he's walking on land previously decorated with skulls and corpses and things um, i think it would be nice if you could get more kits that have arm bones chest bones so like the old legions of nagash skeletons if you buy them they might be quite good desk decorations. Now I'm mixing, I'm falling over my words here because I'm looking at you, and I'm saying that Legions of the Gash models make good de <laughs> base decorations. <laughs> I'm like, and I know I'm like, you're wide-eyed. You're looking at me with disgust. I, how do you, how how dare you? How dare you? So I know that you aren't very happy with this, um, but if you do want to show uh, bone corpses on your bases, then things like that are really good, and also the zombies. Zombies. Graceful Lord Nagash will be turning he around. Will. He, he'll, he will probably <laughs> raise them from the bases to, to kill me, but... Um, yes, you but be careful I with will, that. I will be careful. I, so that's why I tend to just put a skull on there. He can't do much with the skull. Um, but the good kids uh, that have a lot of different like scenery uh, and basic materials are also the giants. The Ale, the Ale Guzzler Gargans. Uh, yeah. Gargans, yeah. Um, another thing with just the general setup we've got here, guys, is that I do it all inside a tea tray. So if any of you have got those little tea trays that you take your cups of tea upstairs in on, then those are really good at keeping all the dust inside of them. Um, on this one I'm creating a little scene where there's skulls underneath a lip of uh, stone there so I'm moving the skulls around to the directions I want them to look in and then I'll cover the excess with sand just sprinkle it on there it means that the room doesn't get as covered with sand as it would if you were working over a over a um, what are they called those mats that people cut into cutting mat cutting mat yeah there we go. Oh, there, my, there, there are little mushrooms, there's the little my mushrooms, favorites. Yeah. yeah, so you can... They're really nice. Northumbrian Tin Soldier do some really nice ones. And uh, there's a few other sellers, like uh, Rival Rival Crafts do... Rival Scenics do, do mushrooms yeah. as well. And So again, with them, cut around the mushroom base, around the foot or whatever it is, so that there's no metal showing. Uh, but it's still got a little bit of metal there, the tag as an anchor. Uh, put the glue around that and then just stick it in the base and that will be all brilliant. You know, I can put a bit of sand around it as well to make it look like it's sprouted out of the ground and pushed a little bit of the ground up. Um, and when you cut the tags out, make sure you hold on to the, the other end that you're cutting out so yes, that it doesn't, it doesn't fly somewhere. Fly somewhere. Yeah. Make sure, make sure it's all safe. So I'm looking at the model, and when I'm putting the model in the base, you sort of want to look at it from all angles and think, is this, is this, you know, like central, or is it off central? You know, how do you want your models to look? Do you want it to look like it's riding up a hill, going down a hill? Is it challenging someone beneath it, or is it challenging someone above it? 
or is it is it leaning over a little crevice? I mean, so these ogres have got such wonderful poses. I put them on these these little rocks to make it look like he's gone and stood on a rock and gone, right before he sort of challenges anyone foolish enough to fight an ogre. Uh, but yes, that is it from us on basing. Uh, if you want more videos on this or more explanations, you can do. There's a finished one there. You can see I've added all the flock and everything on it. I'll add some pictures on. Enjoy your basing, guys. Let us know in the comments if there's anything you want to know. Enjoy, enjoy, guys. See you soon. Okay, guys, a few little extra disclaimers. So uh, once the model and the once the model is in the clay and it stayed overnight to dry, you need to you you will see because it will it will need I we leave them for the night to dry, don't we? Yes. We, we do them in batches of like a hundred to four hundred models. And then we, we they, they, you don't want to move them too much because they could fall, and they could, they could while the while the clay is still setting, they might be a bit um, risky to to work with. You know, you don't want to work on them. You want to let it set, go hard. Yes. So you will notice that the glue and the and the clay will shrink a little bit. So what you might see is a little gap between the clay and the plastic base of the model. If that happens, it's good to put a little bit of PVA glue around it's that. Good to re go around it with the yeah. PVA and sand. And and sand, sand the, it again. The only time that will happen though is if your PVA isn't thick enough. Yes. First time. If your PVA has been left out enough and it's thick enough, there won't be a gap and you will have absorbed enough sand with it the first time round. So so watch out for this. Sometimes it's may, it might be good to just test it a little bit and m maybe reapply the, the, the PVA yeah. glue. It's and easy to do though, it's easy to yeah. do. If you do see any gaps after you're done, just fill them. Same as usual, you can use any basing supplies to do that as well. Okay? Okay. All right. Then. That's it. Thank you so much.